You're looking at silk, a cocoon made of silk. And now you see something moving inside the cocoon, the insect that made it. She's coming out of the cocoon head first after resting inside for nearly three weeks. During that time, she completely changed her form from a caterpillar to a moth. Those big dark spots are her eyes. And now she blows drops of moisture as she comes into the air for the first time as an adult, climbing out through a hole she bored in the cocoon. who's raising her allows only a few moths to become adults like this because adults spoil the cocoon by boring a hole in it. This one, not much bigger than your thumb, will rest for a while before laying next year's batch of eggs. Early in summer, the female lays from 200 to 500 eggs on special paper provided by the farmer. When the babies hatch, they crawl out of their eggs as tiny caterpillars called silkworms. Most hatch at the same time, but in every group you find a few slowpokes. At this stage, they're so small, they make an ordinary pencil seem gigantic. Silkworms eat nothing but mulberry leaves. So the silk farmer waits until the first leaves appear on the mulberry trees, then he sets the silkworms upon the leaves. At this stage, they're furry, but they eat without a stop, grow quickly, and soon appear smooth and white. The bigger they get, the more they eat. day they eat as much as they weigh until finally they've eaten so much they stop to rest by now the worms have eaten so many leaves they're bursting really bursting they burst right out of their covering the old covering splits and the worm crawls out in his new covering. That's called molting. He's bigger now and stretches out to his full length, leaving his old covering behind. The larger worm at the bottom has shed his covering. The other one, a slowpoke, hasn't. In just a few weeks, the larger one has grown as big as your little finger. Those little holes are openings through which he breathes. And this is how he walks. When a silk farmer sees that his silkworms have eaten away most of the mulberry leaves, he brings them more. He pampers them like newborn babies. After eating steadily for five weeks in a row, the silkworms once again stop to rest. By now, they're as long as your middle finger. They've shed their covering four times, and they're getting ready for another change. They're full grown. They've stopped eating. They raise their heads and sway back and forth. When the silk farmer sees that, he rushes in with a rack of tiny cells and places the worms upon the rack. He knows they're ready to spin their cocoons. He wants those cocoons. They're made of silk. 
The farmer wants the worms to spin their cocoons inside the rack, and that's just what they'll do. Each worm now looks for a little room to his liking. Soon, each has moved into a separate room. The rack begins to look like an apartment house. Actually, the rack is like a tiny factory. Already, the silkworms have begun spinning threads of silk, which the worms are attaching to the ceilings and the walls. A sticky fluid comes out of an opening in the worm's upper lip. When that fluid hits the air, it hardens into a fine silk thread. First, the worm spins the outer covering of its cocoon. In the beginning, it looks like a spider's web. The worms need to be kept in a quiet place. Any loud noise disturbs them. They stop weaving if disturbed. Next, the silkworm doubles itself over like a pretzel and begins winding the long, continuous thread of silk around and around its body. see the cocoons taking shape in cell after cell after cell. Some of the faster workers finish their cocoons early and prepare to go to sleep for two or three weeks, during which they'll change into adults. But the slowpokes are still weaving the insides of their cocoons. When the light is right, you can see them right through the cocoon. That's how fine their silk is. Left undisturbed, the silkworms will turn into tiny moths or pupas, as their mother did in the beginning, and bore their way out. To avoid that, silk farmers gently press the cocoons from the racks and prepare to unwind the silk threads from the rest of the cocoon. The cocoons, resembling eggs of a small bird, separate easily from the racks. They're gathered here in a mound. At this stage, the cocoons are soft, undamaged, and weigh very little. One fits comfortably in your hand, and you can easily unwind the individual threads with your fingers. But the thread is not woven immediately. Soaking them in warm water softens the gum that holds the thread together. While they're soaking, a worker takes the ends of threads on four or five cocoons and twists them together so she can put them into a guide like the eye of a needle. She needs several threads at a time because a single thread is too weak to wind and would break. Now the thread is wound around and around on a reel. Finally, the thread is woven into large rolls of silk, ready to be color dyed and sent to companies that make clothing of it. Things like fine shirts and blouses men's ties. 
ladies scarves and much more. Just think, it all began with a tiny insect that helps us all, the silkworm. 